Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are out there. Greetings, my excellent friend. It is so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today, today is, what day is today? Today is July 5th, 2020. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How are we doing, chat room? How is it going out there? It's been uh, it's been a few days. Let's say hello to a couple folks who are hanging out over here in the chat room. There we are. Uh, we're going to say hello to Smab, Coding with Loose. Good afternoon to you. Ah, Stork, hello there. Matt, GR23, hello, hello. And uh, Black Eye is here. Mark, 2067, hello. Rambling Geek is here. How's it going? Looks like the donation, yeah, the donation clip is out of date. We're going to need to update that. I didn't, yesterday was uh, Independence Day here in the States. So uh, I, I, took a, I took a little bit of time, uh, spent some time with the family. Um, didn't spend any time looking at our, our new, um, our new charity goal. So we're going to have to come back and, and work with that in a few, uh, in the next day or two. So we have something ready to go for Tuesday. My apologies on that. Um, uh, Vitlaw, new hat. No, it's a little bit older hat. This is a Ford hat, right? For the uh, Mustang on the hat. So we're going to do a little bit with that today. Abakan, you like the new intro? Thank you. K Merck three one three. Good morning to you. Um, it's it's good to see everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I'm enjoying a little bit of cafe mocha this morning. Hope you had some time to uh, enjoy a fine morning beverage, whatever it might be. Um, so we spent a lot of time on Thursday getting a bunch of stuff set up here. You you see the new look. You see the new background. The new music. Uh, chat's hanging out over here now and um we did a, a bit around getting and, and we've done this off and on for the last month or two uh, about getting the the hat artificial intelligence right because i wear a different hat every stream sometimes i wear multiple hats on a stream and i've got a bunch of them lined up here because i thought i thought today we would do the hat artificial intelligence lightning round that was really loud so what if we go through, we do a bunch of training, train about four or five sets of hats, and let's also let's also get things set up and running. Look, I, I didn't get my thing. There it is. With Fauna, so that we have a little bit of information about each one of my hats sitting out in a database somewhere. Fauna makes a database that sits out in the cloud, and let's put a little bit of information. We have a key of what each one of the hats are I'm wearing, right? Because we tag it appropriately using Azure Custom Vision AI. Let's let's tag those, cross-reference that tag over in a fauna table and be able to bring back, well, here's a little bit of information about that hat that Fritz is wearing. So I think it's an interesting kind of mashup of three or four different technologies. I think we can pull this together pretty quickly today and it'll be a little bit of fun. What do you think, chat room? Smab's only going to be around for the first half hour today. We'll have a good one. Good, good Sunday to you. Um, I think there's. A, is there a particular reason for you for choosing Fauna? Fauna is here. It is over here. They're they're sponsoring the Live Coders team, so we're going to give their we're going to give their service a shot. They have a completely uh, cloud hosted service. Uh, using GraphQL endpoints, so you can connect and query and interact with their database using any programming language, any SDK, anywhere in the world, and they replicate your data everywhere for you uh, very, very quickly. Now, for the volume of querying that we're going to be doing against it, we can get away with Fauna's free plan and interact with them and query, and uh, I'm going to have a table, maybe two hanging out here, so not a lot of data, but stuff that we're going to reference and be able to show here on stream. So that's why I chose to use Fauna. Um, Black Eye asks, will I be using, that's the wrong answer, uh, Fritzbot, will I be using Azure Key Vaults? No, um, I don't have any, um, all of the applications for the bot run locally, so there's no reason to put things in Azure Key Vault. It's just sitting here in a couple configuration files local on this machine. So um, that's a little bit of the thought process behind there. And of course, I'm always looking to explore and try new technologies. 
and um, and get into different things. Um, your hat vanished from one post to the next. What? All right. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to uh, I'm going to kick off a training command because we don't have this hat, my Ford hat, in the collection yet. So I'm going to kick off with a train hat command here. You'll see it kick off there, and for the next, uh, yeah, for the next two three minutes, it's going to take a picture once every ten seconds of the hat so that we can get that loaded into Azure Custom Vision AI. So this is a service that runs out on out on the Azure, out on the big Microsoft Azure cloud out there, so that it will remember all the pictures that we send it and it will also detect when we send it another picture which image it looks like Jean Valjean is here coder 24601 good to see you hello hello um so it's it's already off and running taking some pictures but let me get some music playing here in the background um and let's play this is chartreuse this is music to go by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. This is music scientifically designed. It's engineered to get you in the flow, get you in the groove, so that whatever task it is you're working on, you can focus on and get stuff done. Check it out at mtcb.pwop.com. We're going to execute the music command there in the chat room and get your copy today. What did I just see? Oh, my goodness. Well, let's get, head over to the to the code over here that's not it not that that's not where i want to be i want to be over here there we go head over to this thing see i don't have the alerts on the front screen we just got a resub from fierce kittens hello hello my friend good morning thank you so much tier one play us off keyboard cat <laughs> how's it going fixter jake good to see you Thank you for the follow, Major Gamer Geek. Hello, welcome in. Danthar84 and Rielda is here. Hello. So, um, and I still have to get set up the our new donation goal. Maybe, you know what? Maybe we just continue with the Trevor Project this month. Well, we can do that for July. Just continue with the Trevor Project. I think that's a fine idea. So we'll just do that. Um, so it's already taking pictures out here. And I'll refresh and we should see a handful. There we go. Whole bunch of pictures of this wonderful Ford hat. And it's a little bit different because it's got the, it's a, a chrome badge on it instead of something that's stitched in, um, something that's embroidered. How you doing, Enreal? Um, it says you can't resubscribe till the 5th, but the option is grayed out. It, it's very specific, the Twitch resub with the time of day. Um, so this is how we train the artificial intelligence. We actually are able to go in here and highlight, well, here's what I want you to detect. And I will give it a little bit of text about what it is. So that's really out of focus. I'm going to pass on that. I would, part of me says that that one should be deleted. Um, so that we get some better quality pictures like that. I don't mind, it's a little bit out of focus. A little bit, right? Um, and some of that is because of the reflection of the light on this. So look at that, it's already picking up. Here's the thing you want me to detect, isn't it? Right? That one's not bad. So, and uh, we'll change hats here in just a minute after we get a good sampling loaded. And I'm not gonna train it immediately. Um, there we go. So here I'll load up some more. Um, I'll change hats. I have a handful of them sitting here. Some of them you've seen. I think you've probably seen all of these at one point on, or another. Uh, Long-term viewers of the channel have probably seen most of these. But we're going to get a bunch of hats. Now that's just not right. We can't do anything with that one. And there's that other one. So let's, uh, let's delete these two. Yeah, I, I'm trying to click the checkbox. Thanks. There we go. Delete those. Yes, please. And I think we need probably one more to get loaded up here. And I think it's really cool how we can use... Right, I've got 13. It might be grabbing one more. Um, 
how we can use artificial intelligence to do something a little bit fun. Now, you know what? It's it's not going to. I'm just going to face this way while I do an add hat command. So it takes a picture and loads up. <clears throat> and I'm just going to tilt my head down just a little bit and type add hat. So it takes another picture and uploads that one. So let me refresh. We should see one or two pictures getting loaded up here under untagged. Not yet. Still trying to upload them. All right. It's still trying to upload. There we go. Come on. Now I got a little red dot there. There it found one. Right, and we have to teach it all the different places that this thing is. Right, different angles so that it gets a little bit better at this. There we go. That one's not too bad. I'll take I'll take it. I'll take it. Alright. We said we change to another hat and load up a little bit more. You think I should be taking 20 pictures? No, I'm not banning Ford. What? No. No. Major Gamer Geek loves the Balmer developers rant. Isn't that great? He's been here since the very beginning, and we've been um, having him welcome all of our uh, new followers. Um, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to set a, a hat command for the blue square uh, hat. Mm. I'm going to set a project command for the blue square above us. Let's call this the hat AI uh, lightning round. Hello. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna put a thing up there. There it is. Hat AI lightning. Thank you. Uh, let's put some to dos on there. Um, add a few more hat images. Um, let's also um, uh, start a fauna DB. Um, to store a table with descriptions um, of the various hats. There we go. Major Gamer Geek is making some coffee. It's early. It, it might be early if you're out there on the West Coast. Um, I am I am sponsored by Madrinas. You'll see their logo fly by up there. I've got a little cafe mocha for me this morning. Of course, I chose a green can. Yeah, well, way to go there, Fritz. That, that's real smart. Choosing a green can in front of a green screen. Way to go there. Tough guy. Um, I'd also like to do when uh, maybe, what do you think about this uh, chat room? Um, uh, when hat command is triggered, uh, show picture and description in the uh, blue box. What do you think of that? We overlay this bit here above me with that information. Yes, FaunaDB is a NoSQL database. So you can query it with GraphQL. You can interact with it. You can lay out tab uh, tables, collections, however you'd like. And they will automatically index and allow you to search across those very, very quickly. Never heard of it? Well, we're going to take a look at it a bit today. Let me change hats. See, so going right into the next one. Does it have fierce kittens with the, the key question? This is a question I've been asking our friends at Fauna. I don't have the turn on. The thing, the doodad. There it is. Does it have entity framework support? No. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of a repository pattern in front of it so we can put all the logic for how we interact with Fauna behind a, a typical repository pattern. Get, add, save, delete. We'll have those commands in our repository object and all of the querying that uses Fauna's NuGet package we'll have isolated behind that. So for us in the rest of the application, we don't have to think about any of that database pattern. Um, all right, so I'm gonna execute train hat again, and it's gonna start taking pictures of my d and I love the, the, particularly the and in that. Uh, yes, uh, Fauna is a GraphQL database. Um, there isn't, yes, 
uh, while EF Core can work with GraphQL, there isn't a provider for um, for Fauna, so it doesn't connect up directly yet. They're they're looking for some direction. They're looking for some feedback from .NET folks. So um, that should be taking some pictures. Should see it pop up. Here we go, untagged, and there we go. We've already got a couple of them. So look at that, it already knows exactly where the thing is. So let's do this, open that up, and go this way a little bit, and I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna make it D&D &D like that. Because what's gonna happen, you know what, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't make it like that. Um, I'm gonna relay this information over to that database so that it brings up exactly what we're hoping for. Oh my gosh, look at the redemptions. No D&D allowed. All right, we'll change out of this one. I promise you. And and my goodness, Fairy, I, I thought I saw redeem something as well. Uh, oh my goodness. Let me see. Wear a different hat. And, and hamsters. Fairy wants me to go to hamsters. How's it going, Fairy Wings? We want to go to hamsters mode? Are you kidding? All right. All right. That one's a little bit too fuzzy. I think I'm going to ditch that one. Um... And while that's reloading, I didn't, uh, I still didn't get the voice change tags built here. Um, uh, Pitbull Proton. Hello. Yes. Hello, fairy. Asking me to go to hamster mode. What is this? Um, I do have a timer that I will have playing here in the background. Hello. There it is. Five minutes. All right. Here we go. Taking more pictures. <laughs> Coding Bandit. Hello, hello. Oh, um, feedback. Support it and I will use it. Look at that. Fierce Kittens and Coding Bandit. They're members of the Live Coders team as well. So, um, very cool. Alright, let's see what happens. Um, I've got a couple more pictures here. Let's do some training, and then we'll change hats. Hats? Thank you for the follow. AMDWI. Hello. Welcome in. Uh, doing that. And this one. And that. So, it's good to have a lot of data here that we can work with. Um, to make it more interesting. Darn it. Out of focus. Uh, uh. There's those last two. This one and that one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, better. Uh, uh, all right. That's not too bad. Give me up. I'll take it. Uh, you. Uh, I don't want to see that noggin. There we go. <laughs> um, what is that? It's gone. No, don't want it. Give me more pictures. I want pictures. Mm, nothing yet. Um, cool AI streaming mod idea. Have the streaming software apply various effects to my hat in real time. Oh. Oh, have I got a project for you. <laughs> They make, uh, what is it? They make hats with an LED bar. <laughs> yeah, uh, LED hats. It's got a panel. There it is. Yeah. I want to do that. That'll be so cool. And let the chat room control it. Right? Right? Very this is all your fault. <laughs> I know, Ariel. I know. Voices change and everything goes crazy. Uh, let's see. 
got a couple more pictures. We'll get these tanked. Uh, this one. Uh, there's another one. Right? And we had Coding Bandit on a while ago, right? And, and we set this up. We got it training and learning. And we've got it focused now. It takes great pictures. Directly out of the streaming software. Uh, about two more pictures is it's going to take. Uh, but it takes the pictures, uploads them, and we can do uh, fun stuff with it, right? Uh, get it to tell you a little bit about it. A little bit about it. Squirrel! 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 Coding <laughs> Bandit just gifted five subs. Thank you, thank you. Really appreciate those five gift subs. Hello, hello. And I'm in hamster mode. Look at all the emotes. Oh my gosh. We're going to, um, and I think we did, I, I just decided a little bit ago. We're going to make donations to the Trevor Project throughout July. We did it in June. We're going to do it in July also uh, to help out the, those kids. Teens, LGBT youth, help them in that that time of growth, right in their teens. Thank you so much for the gift subs. Ten seconds of hamster mode left. Whew. Uh, another bad picture. Rats. It's like I'm moving around too much. You know? You know? It's a thing. Okay. I hope you enjoyed hamster mode there. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for those five gift subs. Veet Lull, Dom FX, Come Bar Capes, Graham Weldon, and Estrange TV. Congratulations. You all just got gift subs. Um, thanks to our friend, um, Coding Bandit. Very, very cool. Now, um, I need to get just a couple more pictures loaded up here be with this hat in order for it to be able to train. See, I've got... 11 pictures there. So I need to take just a few more pictures. I'm going to try and hold my head still here while it's taking that picture. There it goes. It took the picture. I'm going to turn this way a little bit and take another picture and let it send that one up. I know it's taking the picture. I know it is. I know it. I know it. I know it. See, taking the picture. I need to get just two more. And we'll get those loaded up. While it's taking the picture, I'm going to set this right here. Do that. And we'll grab. Yep, that looks good. We'll do this one. And then we'll change hats as requested by um, who submitted the the request. Here it is. Vitlol. No D&D &D allowed. Not a problem. Not a problem. Let's do one more pointing up like this a little bit. Come on. There we go, taking a screenshot to add to the database. We'll get this one loaded up. There we go, there it is. We'll grab that. And I think this is the last one, right? I think it is. So, uh, 15, there we go. And the request was no D&D &D allowed. All right, is Fairy Wing still here? Fairy, are you still here? I think Fairy's still here. I need to change into a different hat. How's that? Is that a better hat? This is Fairy Wing's hat. Thank you so much for that. It's a very kind gift. She's got a couple hats over hats and shirts and things over there from her stream if you want to check those out. But I'm going to make sure that we train. So we get this one loaded up, taking screenshots. Yeah, it doesn't know what this one is. It doesn't know the Fairy Wings hat. So thank you so much, uh, Vitlo, for the uh, uh, redemption. See, it, it thinks this is it thinks this is an Azure hat. That's so wrong, and that's why we need to take more pictures so that it can better know exactly what it is that I'm wearing. See, um, look at that. That's a bad one. We're gonna need to replace that. 
delete it, but look at that. And so we're just going to highlight and we will label this fairy wings. So it's going to take more pictures and we'll get, get those loaded up. So da, 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 right. So, and it's taking them faster than I can click through and apply labels. Oh, that's a better one. Look, it's got a little bit. Ugh. Got hair from the dog on it or something. I don't know. Oh, thank you, fairy wings. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So I'm gonna look this way for just a little bit so I can get some picture, uh, some pictures. Take care, Smap. So, right, the idea here is the Custom Vision AI website. It it has pictures of all these different hats that I'm wearing, and we've we're taking those pictures straight from OBS. And you're going to be able to ask it, well, what hat? And it'll reply with that tag, right? So I'm teaching it now what the fairy wings tag is, and it'll see that it's, well, it says black background with the purple P there. That's the fairy wings logo. And we'll get it, so we'll train it in just a minute so that it reports. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. Now, what I want to do to kind of improve things a little bit here is you see the Azure hats? These ones are a little bit confusing here that we did with Coding Bandit. There's Carrie. Um, really far away. But these ones where it's pretty much the only thing out here, I believe it does a much better job of grabbing that. So I want to start to clean up. I'm gonna, I want to delete a couple of these pictures so it's a little bit clearer exactly what it's zooming in on, right? And we can get better, better detection when we have just that Azure logo out there. Same thing, I, like I think I'm gonna dump the Cubs and the Royals here. Um, the Madrinus, the Madrinus logo, it picked up pretty good, right? It actually did a pretty good job with that one, getting some pictures. So, um, so we'll clean up some of these while it's loading. Um, we have plenty of hats here. Sorry, I'm gonna delete these pictures of the two of us when we were writing that code. Um, this one's way too far out. This one is a little bit too far out, so let me get rid of that. There's Corey Hurricane Weathers there, CLW. He's another member of the Live Coders team. Um, yeah, we were doing some Twilio quests, some stuff at Build last year together. And there's Scott Hunter when we, uh, we wrote some code together on stream. And um, yeah, very cool stuff. All right, so clean that up just a little bit. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of kids in this one. Uh, <laughs> um, so the Mandalorian hat, the NASA hat, my Diva hat, the fairy wings. We've only got six pictures there. We'll work on that. Um, I love my Phillies bell hat. That's a really good hat, right? But it's way. See, the pictures are way too far out. So we need to clean that up a little bit. I may end up, I may end up just nuking this tag altogether because it's it, it's just too far out, um, right? Visual Studio 2019 that came in very well. The Twitch Trucker hat, see, it's too far out. Uh, we may want to nuke this and get it up there. I don't have a Fierce Kitten Studio hat. It's almost as if I don't want FKS as a logo. Try me. <laughs> we might be able to do something with that. I've been known to walk a fine line. Uh, let's load up a couple more pictures here. So, right, and we'll, uh, I'll kick off the training on this and we'll see if it detects fairy wings appropriately so that it, whenever I'm wearing this hat and and in particular and this is the reason I chose fairy wings hat is because this is one that I really want to be able to put a story next to it a little bit of a description because to just say oh that's the fairy wings hat for some folks who don't know fairy wings well gosh tell me more I'd like to know who where can I learn more about this Ah, that one's a little bit out of focus. Yeah, you know what? Let's take it anyway. It's not too bad. That one's pretty bad. There we go. That's a good one. Um, 
so it'd be nice to be able to provide a little bit of a link, a little bit of a description. Oh, you can learn more about Fairy Wings over, and she streams over here on this channel. So, right, it's just a way to give a little bit more information. Uh, we have 13, so we're going to need to add two more hats. Uh, let's do this. Let's see if I can get it to take a picture like that. There we go. And I'm going to tilt my head down just a bit and get it to take one more picture. There we go. All right. I uh, wonder if it may be getting confused with the Phillies hat. The color, yes, the color in the, is exactly. I think Coding Bandit is uh, putting into words here something that I'm struggling with. With the Phillies hat, there's so much going on in those pictures that the red and the blue um, could be a differentiator. And having this hat where we have the purple P logo, very focused, very tight, it should be a little bit easier for it to detect when that's the only thing that comes through on the picture. So there's those two new pictures. So I'll just load those up like this. All right, let's kick off the training. And while it's training, we'll go over and start getting things set up on Fauna. So here are the different tags that I have available. Thank you so much for the follow, Diva73. Hello, Lasamet. Good morning. Good to see you. So let's teach it all about these. And uh, where to go? Train, right? Quick training, even though quick training is actually going to take a little bit of time to do here. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to head over to Fauna. Uh, there we go, fauna.com. I believe I'm already signed up. I think I'm already signed up. Um, I'm going to sign in with my GitHub. Uh, that's not that's not the GitHub account I want to use. I have a lot of GitHub accounts. Authentication code. Yes, I need to do two-factor authentication. Dun, 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 dun. I have a few more hats here that I want to put in. Um, in particular, uh, the next hat that I want to load up after we test to make sure that it picks up this hat is my um, Game of Thrones hat. My, uh, right, the House of Stark hat. So let me get my GitHub two-factor. Uh, and it is this. There we go. We'll get that logged in. He did some Microsoft Learn courses this week. Oh, uh, happy to hear that, Lassiment. Hope you enjoyed that. Yes, authorize Fauna. Please go. Go do the thing. All right. There we go. Uh, new to Fauna DB Cloud. Uh, skip the tutorial. So, usage breakdown. Okay. So, I'm going to create a new database and let's call this uh, Fritz uh, Hat Repository. Uh, no, we don't need demo data. All right, so let's create a collection, and um, I'm I'm very I'm a very simple person. Uh, hats history date. What is history days? Document history is retained. Clearing the field will retain history forever. But please note, uh, no, that's fine. And uh, TTL documents are deleted this many days after their last write. Documents of the collection will be removed if they have not been updated within the configured time to live this optional field can be changed later uh no i want them to always be there no documents yet it doesn't know anything inside my hats collection out here all right so still training all right we'll let that keep running um so let's create a new document so all the documents in fauna db are json documents right you can structure them just like you know, um, with different fields so that they're what, whatever type of object you need to store in the database. So, um, oh, Coding Bandit started her foray into Blazor. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, Fierce Kittens may be, may, may be enjoying Blazor a little bit more than is healthy. Coding Bandit, and I'm, so I, you you may as well. <laughs> mm. So let's do this. Um, so I'm going to create. Um, let's. Well, hello, look at that. We got a little bit of type ahead in the editor there. That was kind of cool. Um, so let's call the first field tag 
and we created uh right we created a tag over here called fairy wings so we'll base off of that um and let's say description um uh fairy wings is a another streamer on twitch um and a friend of the channel um learn more about her at and i'll put the full link here so that right it's a little bit descriptive so now instead of it just coming back and saying oh jeff's wearing his fairy wings hat i can put a description with it that tells you a little bit about exactly what that is Lissamit did, did a uh, couple learn modules, Microsoft learn modules, Python and C Sharp. Even though you already knew C Sharp, you learned a thing or two. Hey, that's great. It, it, there's things like around programming languages that you get into a groove and you figure out, well, here's a place that I feel comfortable working. And, and to take a step out and be reminded, oh yeah, remember there's these other cool features? I feel like there, there's something I want to go back and refresh and learn about my tools, my programming languages once a week, just to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, right? And maybe there's something I put in my toolbox and it helps grow my skill set. Very cool stuff. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Fairy Wings makes a very good point here. Fairy Wings. Coding Bandit makes a very good point here. Um, check this out. There it is. July 30th. There is another .NET Conf event. This is a focus on microservices event. And Coding Bandit is speaking as part of that event. Uh, of course, right? All some of your .NET uh, friends that you've seen are going to be there. Scott Hunter, we just saw a picture of him. David Fowler will be speaking as part of this. Coding Bandit. Um, Kelsey Hightower will be speaking at this event. Be really good. To ch make sure you check that out. .NET Conf. The focused dot dot net conf dot com and you'll learn more about that one yes lots of virtual conferences monday i'm actually hosting a a talk in the afternoon on the manning publications channel about artificial intelligence so that's going on as well that's not a conference that's more of just a show to tune into so so much uh, fixture jake you are very much correct there there's always things to learn, no matter how advanced you are. Take some time, and and you, right? You might find out something new, something exciting that makes your life a little bit easier. You like microservices architecture, major gamer geek? Very cool. Yeah. There's so right. The idea here is we've hosted, we've got this database hanging out here. We'll add a let's let's add something else into this collection. So there's our first document in our hats collection. Let's add another one. Um, go back to the training images. Let's find one here. Um, here, let's do this one. Mandalorian, right? So I'm just going to copy that tag. And we'll add more documents into here as we go along, right? So uh, tag Mandalorian. Um, description. Um, I don't know where Fritz got this hat. But he, he knew this is the way. Right. Love the Mandalorian hat. It is a nice hat. I like that one. It's very... Oh my goodness, what was that? Storyteller mode from just a viewer. All right. We'll do it. We'll do it. Boba Fritz. <laughs> well... Maybe. All right, we will uh, we'll head over to storyteller mode. I can drop in there for a bit, and of course, if if you can't understand anything that I'm saying while we're in the various uh, voiceover modes, closed captioning does work. Um, you can hit the CC button. It's probably right about here, um, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fauna DB story time. <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe. It, so this has its own music, so I'm going to back out here. Oh yes. Welcome in, children. It's time to learn about Fauna DB. We're adding 
We're, we're adding documents to a collection. You know what? Let's add Madrinus while I'm in here. Let's do that. Da, 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 da. And it'd be nice if I could just click and add another document. No, gotta go back. All right. Uh, new document. All right, here we go. Um, JSON documents. So, Madrinus. There it is. Uh, description. There we go. Um, uh, Madrinus is the uh, coffee sponsor for the C Shop Fred's channel. Use code. That's not it. Um, at checkout to get 20% uh, off your order of Madrinus coffee at uh, uh, madrinus.com. <laughs> there we go. See? Kind of sounds like James Earl Jones. No, not really. How are you doing, Akin Slayer? Uh, Alright, so I've got a couple of. A couple of. I've got. I've got a couple of documents. Um, let's create an index. Let's call this uh, hats tag terms. Terms. Uh, which fields? Yes. Tag. Index on the tag value. What do you mean? Oh, oh, description, right? Uh, uh, nah. Yes, unique, because I only want to have one tag that when you search, I want to find it quickly and, and return. So there we go, save, search documents. So if we search, right, it should come back. Yeah. Okay, database 101, right? Had an as is instead of an at in the Madrinus. Oh no! Let's go back. Do, 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 do. Edit this. <gasps> Blue Blood just resubscribed for three months. The Overlord's <laughs> plan, the future's competition, turned out to be an exercise by the planetary overlords engaging the depth of knowledge of their existence with the minimum of text. All winners were duly executed. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you for this sub. Uh, three months. Very cool. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, at. Thank you. Save. All right. So now I've got I've got some documents right that we can query. Um, how's the training? What's the training? Um, ah, there we go. All right. So I will make this published, and we're gonna have it predict the fairy wings hat. So let's do this. Reset hat AI. Alright. Let's have a guess. Here we go, fairy. Let's see if it if it knows your hat now. And and I didn't set a timer for this. 97.5% certainty. Look at that. Look at that. I feel good. I feel good about that. That makes me smile. That's that's nice. Ah, look at that. <laughs> now, what we want to do, the next step, is not just say wearing his, his hat, the fairy wings hat, but in the box, put a picture and the description that we keyed into Fauna. So that right, it becomes a little bit more interactive. And even the folks that are watching on YouTube can see when someone asks, Hey, what hat is that? So, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's a cool goal here. What do you think, Fairwings? I see a big smile there in chat. All right. So, we need to change hats. We need another hat. And after I change hats, I'm, I never set the five-minute timer. We're going to... Exit storyteller mode. Let me see. What do we got over here? Um, uh, we already have this. Uh, don't need that one. Um, yeah, that's good. The house. 
Stark. You want to read what? A storyteller. Oh, you want to read the... Your, your, uh... Okay, here, I can read that. Blue Blood asked me to read the notification. Here we go. The Overlords plan the Futures competition turned out to be an exercise for the planetary Overlords engaging the depth of knowledge of their existence with the minimum of text. All winners were duly executed. Thank you for the follow. Um, where's that? Where, where, I, I saw him follow there. I thought I saw a follow. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Um, Visigo, mm, welcome in. So the font of DB is not used for AI. That's right. Yeah, uh, type add hat very carefully. And we want to do a train hat this time so that it takes 15 pictures very quickly and loads them into uh, loads them into the database. And that's right. We aren't using Fauna to store the artificial intelligence. We're using Fauna to store our lookup table that we're going to be getting data out of. See, the the bot runs inside of a Docker container. So I don't have a database running in the Docker container that has all the data loaded, right? This is something that's going to grow and change. And why not try using our friends Fauna, using their service to store some of this information and interact with it. And we'll learn, we'll learn a new product along the way here. So there we go. It's taking some screenshots. And if I pop back over here, go to the training images. It's already got a couple. There we go. Um, now it's going to look a little, a little, uh, a little blurry because it, this is another metallic hat. So I'm going to put G O T Stark for Game of Thrones Stark, and this is where we'll once again be able to open up and add some information about this, right? Um, I should have copied that. So I had it on the clipboard. So it's going to town, taking pictures right now. So let's grab a bunch of these. That's a really good picture, right? And after we're done getting a couple pictures here, I think I've got, Coding Bandit suggested we we load up the um, Doctor Strange hat. We'll get that one loaded up as well. Um, <laughs> lurky dev. <laughs> I could store the model in Fauna. I technically could. That would be interesting. Um, Surly dev suggests. Oh, this is that's. Well, that could be fun. When I use the train hat command, I should get the bot to play an audio file that says strike a pose before it takes the picture. Well, it takes pictures every 10 seconds. So that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> it might be taking a lot of pictures. You might be hearing that a lot. There, there was, right, I, I floated an idea of having a, a camera shutter clicking sound effect each time it takes a picture. That that could be a lot as well, right? And, and uh, could be a little bit of an issue for folks. May it say strike 15 poses. Could be. Sure. Um, we'll see. All right. Yeah, here we go. So, um, right, I'll add a, one more document here just because this one's a little bit different. Tag name, right? Um, description. Um, the crest from the house, not hose, House of Stark from the game 
of Thrones uh, TV series. Yeah. All right. The crest is that? Um, wouldn't that particular hat be difficult because it's metallic in the green screen? Yeah, right. I mean, it it doesn't the green's behind, so we don't have that much of a problem with it, but it could be. Right? Oh, there's some... That's a really good one. Right? Let's see. And and look, you can see the depth of it, right? Because it really is raised above the hat. That's why I like this one. It's so unique. And, and for Game of Thrones to have a metal... Right? Not a patch, but a metal... Right? Uh, uh, attached logo on there. Right? It, it just feels so medieval. Right? Thank you for the follow. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But welcome in. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, maybe have it play a sound clip for the first and last pictures only. Mm, maybe. So we know when it's starting. If it, if it gave me a warning, it might influence me to keep looking towards the camera. And the whole point of multiple images is to get all sorts of angles. Yes, agreed. Thank you, Major Gamer Geek. I'm glad you like this hat. I, there was another one they had, and it was, um, oh my gosh, I, look at this, it's been so long since I've seen Game of Thrones, I'm starting to forget some of the, some of the families in it, um, Lannister, it was House Lannister, and it was a gold lion that was mounted up there, and, uh, I only had enough cash on me that day to buy one hat, and I was like, oh, let me get the Stark hat, I like the Stark one, um, but in, in thinking about it now, that, that gold, Lannister hat would have been really cool. Would have been really cool. Um, still taking some pictures. It's having... It's taking just a few extra seconds here to upload. That's okay. So, I've already got a couple pictures. Some definition loaded over here. We'll have to add some more over here. Um, but... Um, come here, you... I can search NuGet. Um, I use DuckDuckGo, so exclamation point NuGet will put me into searching DuckDuckGo, and I'm going to search for Fauna over there, so we can find. Um, here we go, Fauna DB client. Last updated two months ago, a C sharp driver for Fauna DB. See, this is one of the ways that you can tell that folks aren't .NET first, or or right, they they don't have .NET first folks. Working with them, the fact they call it a C sharp driver and not a .NET driver. Um, so, it, yeah, here we go. Fauna DB dot client. Um, not too many downloads. Not too many .NET folks using this. Um, if I go over to the project site, we'll get some instructions on how to start working with it. .NET. I don't want to build it. I don't want to run tests. I want to use it. Fauna DB Hello World Endpoint, your secret secret. Um, process data, do queries. See, and these are not entity framework friendly ways to do this, right? Um, so I've I have encouraged them, hey, it'd be really great if this was something we could just bolt on to entity framework. So you can say, right, entity framework context. Um, use Fauna DB and have it do all the translations. Fixter Drake tried to watch Game of Thrones. The first episode was super slow. Never got into it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and and Elfo Crash. You're right. The 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 fact that they call it a driver and not a provider. Right, provider is the .NET ecosystem term for the the thing that allows you to connect to a, a database. Um, we call them providers. Other technologies call them drivers. To each of their own. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, Johan. Good to see you. It's a .NET library. Yep. So, how to instantiate the client. So, I don't know how to connect out to Fauna yet. Right? I don't have um, the secret for how to connect to this. Collections, indexes, functions, shell, GraphQL. Is it under security? Create your first key. Wow. Wow. Okay. And it'll let me create my new key. Not... Whatever. Um, so... 
the browser tearing when I'm scrolling? Browser tearing? It's not tearing. No. Winter is coming. Well, I hope it's coming. It's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit here. So, no, PHHV, I'm not seeing that issue. Let me know. Um, so, I already have out here, I've already opened. This is my, right, this is my uh, my bot source code, Fritz Stream Tools. You can, of course, find this on, uh, on my GitHub. Um, but I'm going to add into the bot now. Right, I'm going to add an AI lookup context, an AI lookup repository, right? So, Major Gamer Geek, um, let me come back to that in just a second. I'm going to, let me pin your question there. Let me just, I don't want to say no. I want to answer that. I want to describe it. But let me finish setting up this a little bit because this part isn't artificial intelligence. Um, so let me do this. Uh, I don't. I didn't want to open that. Um, for inside the chatbot, I'm going to add a class, and I'm going to use a repository pattern. Let's call this. Um, um, uh, this is going to be the uh, hat description. Let's call this. Yeah, hat description repository. Right, because that's really all that I'm doing here. Um, so now I need to add that that provider, that that fauna provider. Right, fauna db dot client. There it is. Dot net framework for. Oh no. Dot net standard one five. We're good. So that's installing. Meanwhile, we should still have some more images loading up for this. And I'll, there we go. Fantastic, got a couple here that we're gonna need to retake, but we'll deal with it. While I'm categorizing this, let me answer Major Gamer Geek's question. Major Gamer Geek is very new to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Can I explain my Docker container setup? So I'm not using Docker specifically with the artificial intelligence that we're doing here. Um, my bot runs inside of a container. It takes pictures from OBS and uploads them to this service. This is Custom Vision AI. This runs on top of Microsoft Azure. I can use this nice interface to go through and right, categorize, teach it how to do the uh, the identification of the various images that I wanted to, to work with. And it's all managed, it's all stored up there in the cloud. Um, I'm gonna pass on that one. We'll, we'll load another image. That one's not too bad. Uh, there we go. So I have it taking a picture. It, the Custom Vision AI knows how to do the image comparison between when it takes a picture to test See, there's another bad one. We'll ditch that and get a new one. Um, and it reports back, well, here's comparison-wise which one I think it is, right? So these two, let's delete those. And we'll add, add a hat. Let it take a picture of this one. There we go, took that picture. I'm gonna turn and look this way and tell it to take a hat picture. And wait for it to write back. It says it's still adding the picture. Come on. Did it get the picture? Um, that one's, it's still blurry. It's still blurry. I don't like it. I don't like it. That's better. Right? And let's see if we can get one more. Hey, Stelzy! Hello, hello. Boom, boom. Yes, more hats indeed. Let's see if we can get it to add this one. Come on. Right? Maybe. Taking a screenshot, it says, there we go. That should be 
enough hats. N enough hat pictures. Let's see what we got. Game of Thrones Stark. Oh, it says it got 20 pictures. Well, that's more than enough. All right. The dire wolf looks reflective. Maybe that's why it's blurry. It, it Yeah, it could be fooling the webcam. You're right, Johan. It could be. So, this is all, right, there is no container major gamer geek in play here. I could load these into a container and have them running locally or somewhere, but um, it, the user interface for training and managing these is so easy for me to use. I'd much rather use this than have to build something around it to work with it. You need to write a Twitch bot. Twitch bot, writing a Twitch bot is kind of like a... Uh, a rite of passage for folks that stream uh, code here on Twitch. Eh, adding little things. Uh, our friend, uh, um, a bunch of live coders have done this. Fierce Kittens, she shares hers, the gift bot. She wrote hers with Blazor. And that's available for folks to use. Uh, Johan asks a good question here about this. Um, can we download the trade into models? You know, um, yeah, you can export them, sure. Right? So if I can, right, if I can export using a compact domain can be exported. So I guess if we can export it, we could run it somewhere offline. I guess. That, that's probably a thing. Um, let's see. Yeah, Surly Dev makes a good point. Make sure your bot doesn't respond to text that other bots output to chat. Yeah. I could load it into a local container. Absolutely. Oops. Now, this one's a little bit trickier because you see it's transparent here, but this Doctor Strange hat, it's taking a picture without the transparency on it. So I'm going to kick off train hat again, and it's going to start taking screenshots one more time. There we go. See? So it does see the blue there. Mott! Moz 2005 just gifted five subs. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Mott, for, the, for those gift subs. And uh, we're going to make donations. We're going to make donations to the Trevor Project all July. Thank you so much for those gift subs. Um, I'm, I'm going to call this Dr. Strange... Um, um, what do I call this? Uh, uh, let's, let's just start with Dr. Strange. Right? For the Dr. Strange hat here. Um, we're going to make five donations to the Trevor Project to help those folks, help those kids that are LGBT, trying to find their way uh, get the help they need. Thank you so much for your support. And I'm very happy to pay that forward. Look at that. It's starting to recognize where this thing is. There's another picture. Get that loaded up. I love how quickly it, it works, right? Uh, here's some more. I'm going to turn my head slightly to see if we can get it to pick up when it takes the next pictures. Right? See? A little bit different angle. Turn this way, see if I can get it to pick up a different angle this way. Right? I know you're out there. I know you're watching. It's taking pictures. I know it is. I know it is. So. Uh, nope. No more pictures just yet. All right. It. Yep. Still loading here. I see it. So. The Doctor Strange Holy Hat. Well, I don't know about that. So, um, congratulations to Veronica Geek, Surly Dev, MJTAU, Glasgow Astro, and Cyanator. Congratulations. You just got gift subs from our friend Mott. And 25 other folks in chat got pride emotes. Very cool. Congratulations on that. There could be a webhook that gets triggered. Here, let me put this up. This is an interesting comment from Johan that we need, should think about. For each new trained model and push that into a new container. Is there a webhook when the training finishes? Maybe. That could be interesting to do. But you would need to, when it gets finished, you need to deploy that trained model. So we would need to deploy it 
and then download it. There's something that could be done there for sure. Hey, Cyrilash. Good morning to you. Is a webhook like an event? Let me let me explain this. For just a viewer asks, is a webhook like an event? Yes. Um. So when you browse to a website, right? So if I open up and browse to a website, this is what we call an HTTP GET, right? We're going to go get this page. I went to Bing, get Bing, and paint it on the screen. A webhook is a GET to a specific location that is triggered when an event happens. So we could have, thank you for the follow, we could have in the case that that johan's describing we could have oh it's done training the model the event that triggers says go get maybe it's not bing.com maybe it's some other endpoint that we're listening on we're just a web server there waiting for that get and we go and process and do something else with that notification so it's a way for us to have a disconnected distributed system that communicates across the web by sending requests automatically programmatically when some sort of an event happens thank you for the question Very, it, I, I like covering some of those um, some of those interesting bits of information for folks that might not be um, might not be expert developers that's okay we're always about learning here and that's why we have the AMA tag on here always happy to answer that Shashi123 makes a very, very good comparison. And thank you for sharing that. That's a very good comparison also. When you get a push notification on your phone, right? You get that, you get the notification from Twitch because you follow the channel, right? That says, I'm going live. That's a webhook. That, that, right? That's Twitch is pushing out a notification to a service that says, Fritz went live and it distributes that information it pushes that to your phone so that's another type of notification liar 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 pants on fire okay um web hooks are amazing in combination with serverless very good point johan so here's the thing I actually have a webhook that fires at the end of every stream that grabs information about the stream. So I can archive and analyze and learn more about how to make my streams better. All kinds of great stuff there. Um, oh, very cool, Diddle Dan. That is very cool. Um, let me go over here. Let's see if we have some more pictures of the Dr. Strange chat. We'll qualify these. And we'll start wiring up our database connection for Fauna so that the bot can start asking Fauna, hey, what's this hat? Do we have some information about that that we should share? So there we go. That one's a little bit out of focus, but it's not too bad. Right? Not, not too bad. Here we go. Two more loaded. Uh, pretty good. Let me give you a little bit more breathing room around that logo there we go right um, and I think this is also a really neat way to learn about artificial intelligence something that folks can kind of relate to um, because when you when you see that I have a hat collection of more than a hundred hats it's more than a hundred hats um, to be able to detect what they are and give a little bit of background information. And I, I'm, I'm really just putting, right, I, I, I could put some very deep information in here about, well, and, you know, Jeff got this hat in January 2020 and blah, blah, blah. You know, I could put all kinds of really deep information in there. I don't know if you want to see all of that. So, um, Johan points out that the AI doesn't care about focus. Yes. But at the same time, I want it to be accurate. So I want to make sure that we get clean pictures loaded up. Um, let's see here. Oh, no. 
clips of uh, on the Live Coders Notable Clips repo page. Yes, Clarkio has been updating that. <laughs> uh, there's Doctor Strange. I've got 13 photos. It's got a few more it's trying to load. I can see it's trying to load screenshot number 12 right now. So we'll see them get loaded here in a minute. Let me head back over to the code. Right, so we now have the Fauna DB client installed in the project. Um, so what I should be able to do, if we take a look here, um, so we have an endpoint and we have a, a secret key. Hmm. Okay. Client query, where is it? Ah, there we go. New Fauna client, do query client wait. Okay. Um, so let's, let's put the endpoint and the secret out as configuration values so that we can have them configured outside the bot and load it up. You did a few PRs to the notable clips. Thank you, Surly Dove. Um, I, so I'm wearing my live coders jersey today. I shipped, we shipped 13 jerseys before the Live Coders Conference in June. I waited a few weeks. I was waiting for one or two more things to arrive. I'm, I've still got one more item that's coming. But we shipped out 50 more boxes on Friday. And I've got a bunch more boxes and um, some swag bags I'm sending out to some VIPs that helped us out during the event, helping out the Live Coders. Those I'm trying to get all finished, printed out, shipped out, all the paperwork. Uh, the international paperwork. Customs forms are a pain in the neck. Um, those are going to be shipped out, hopefully, tomorrow. So, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Pori Dev asks, what OS? I'm using Windows 10. We've used Mac OS. We've used um, Ubuntu. We've used Chrome OS here on stream. Today, we're using Windows 10. So, I need a Fauna endpoint and a Fauna secret. Secret. Um, so I want to put those in configuration settings. All my configuration settings sit here in stream tools. Let me go down here. App settings. Let's create a space for where this will live. Uh, mixer. Mixer, mixer, mixer. Anyways. Um, scroll down. So here's GitHub. Azure services, right? There's where that stuff lives. I'm going to add another service here. I will add FaunaDB. All right, and uh, endpoint, right, and uh, secret. Now that's a secret, right? I don't, I don't want to be sharing that. But I'm gonna put that. Um, I'm gonna put these into my user secrets. They'll be in environment variables, so that when my container starts up. These will um, these will be loaded from from a secret location someplace that I don't need um, I don't need to spend too much time tracking and, and being too concerned about uh, storage and it getting leaked out into the into the into the ether into the internet. So um, all right, so I need to get FaunaDB endpoint is the configuration. So here, I'm going to need to receive configuration, and I'm going to use some hotkeys to create, you know what, I don't need that one. That's, no, let's not do that. Let's stash the configuration directly. Uh, endpoint is uh, configuration fauna db, what is it, like that, right? So we'll get that value, and the other one is uh, secret. Now I don't think mm, I don't think I want to load it up each time. You know what? No. Let's do this, right? Because I'll I'll create a client right here and just have it available. Fauna DB secret. There we go. So if I do this right, it says new fauna client. So let's create a client, new fauna client. Um, there we go. String secret endpoint. Oh, all right. Well, can I just do 
that. And we'll create a read-only field so we have our client hanging out there. Um, does client have an I disposable? No. All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ubuntu. I, I do enjoy Ubuntu. I have it on my uh, Lenovo laptop. The 2004 I installed, and it slowed down the machine considerably. So I'm kind of kind of concerned about that one. Hmm. Let me head back over here to Fauna. Let me go into security. I'm going to create a key here. Um, let's do this. I'm going to change scenes um, while I create this key so that I don't inadvertently share it. Right? I, last thing I want to do is share that out. Um, and I'll call this uh, like that. There we go. And uh, there we, there's my keys secret. Okay. And I'm going to manage secrets on my project. Make sure I type the right. Yep, Fauna DB. And uh, there's the secret, All right? Oh, it's a capital S on it. Ooh, ooh. I nearly made a mistake there. Let me head back over to the code and show you. Um, see, it's a capital S on secret. Um, wait a second. Hang on. Hang on. I still have the page up that has the secret. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. Got it removed. Um, all right. Now I can go back. Whew. Um, how long till we finished with March? March? Oh, be, mm, I see where you're going with that. Uh, let me see if we've got... I should have a couple more. There we go. A couple more Doctor Strange pictures. And uh, uh, that was part of it, but... Copy that. I only shared part of the key. Eh. Um, well, that's nice because it picked up a little bit of the underside because Stephen Strange is underneath the hat. That's kind of cool. Um, I like the hats that have something hiding under the brim. Um, so, 17 pictures of Doctor Strange. Why is it getting so many? But oh, Okay, that's, that's just fine. Let's train it. Quick training. Yes, please. And here it goes. All right. So I'll have it trained up with a couple more images. While it's doing the training, um, over here, this should be good. So this should now know how to connect into Fauna, right? These are not the passwords you are looking for. Something like that. That could be fun. We could do that. Um, I'm going to mark the add a few more hats task as done um, so that we can move on here, right? Uh, no, not add. To do, done, one. There we go. All right, and we've started a Fauna DB to store a table with descriptions. So we're, I wanna finish writing this little bit of query about that. Um, developers, developers, developers. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> Welcome in, goat. Hello. Um, Diddle Dan asks a question here. Let's put this up. I'm only mapping the logo itself on the hat images. Wondering if it might be better to match the whole hat so the AI learns that the logo has to be on a hat rather than just randomly in the scene. So I tried doing this with, the, with this whole layout that you see here. And it would find things in the rest of the picture and would get confused. Lots so, of hats requires lots of work sometimes. 
Thank you, Nothing Else Matters. Appreciate the cheer. And we'll make another donation to the Trevor Project. So when it takes the pictures that it uploads for the hats, it is only taking taking a picture of now it's only taking a picture of this segment of the screen it, it's literally going to this camera here and only taking that picture so i'm not concerned about it seeing other things the fact that it finds the logo with that color in the background for what we're doing is good enough so i'm pretty happy with with how it's behaving it's a good question and when we were taking a picture of the full screen sure but I'm only ever right here, right? So it kind of works out nicely. A secrets page with this clip in MP3. What do we got? Can't find the clip. These are not the passwords you are looking for. We can do I something like that. These are not the passwords. Mm -hmm, mm hmm yeah yeah see I've I've really limited the field of view right to just where my hat is so when it's taking a picture both for analysis and for um, training it really is focused on just my hat so all right um, so what I want to do is I want to have it go get a description based on the tag that was submitted. So let's write a method for that. Um, let's start with just a string, right? Because I'm just going to get the description, right? Um, get the description, if any, uh, that goes with the tag for the hat identified. The uh, unique tag for the hat. Uh, yeah, just say it for the hat. Um, description, if any, for the hat. Okay. Um, you know what? I should probably make this. Can I? Can I do this? Async task so that it goes out and does the thing. Um, right is this yes it is good 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 so i want it to i don't process data do query so i've got this do query client wait what do query is await client.query paginate match index uh, what um okay so it's searching on spells Generics are awesome. And... Huh? <laughs> Wait a sec. This is a little confusing to me. As a relational database person... What? Client.query paginate... I'm not going to paginate because I'm only going to get one. So, client.query.match... Um, it's a method expression okay mm. paginate well it wanted to paginate there Pagin okay whatever I guess that works it doesn't I don't know what that does okay uh, no no SQL is a different beast uh, should that be phone a client? No, actually. So check this out, right? I'm not getting an underline, right? Um, the endpoint, these things, I don't need to give it all of that. So, right, I can just pass in the secret directly. <clears throat> um, uh, fix that. We need a using statement there. Client.query, right? How to execute a query. Um, I guess I need to paginate. I guess, but it doesn't know what paginate is. That's a pain in the neck. Um, result at, 
how to access, how to work with I result. He doesn't know what paginate is. Why don't you know what paginate is? Um, that's annoying. How does it know what endpoint? It looks like there's just one endpoint. DB Phonicom 443. Um, all right, client.query, come here you. Uh, params fauna db query expression. All right, so if I say fauna db query, what expressions do we have here? Okay, expression, sure. Well, that just didn't work. All right, what am I missing? Show me some samples here. Um, sure, client test. Show me how you run a query. Client.query create index. I'm not creating an index. I want to go get one. Create. Nope. I don't want to create. Nope. Nope. Don't want to create. Don't want to create. I want to do a select. Not an abort either. Mm, get client query ref. What's ref? What happens if I put ref in there? No. There's a using statement missing here somewhere. Um, bingo. I'd like those, please. Now, do you know what paginate is? Yes, you do. What else do we have besides paginate? Right? I, I don't wanna I don't want it paginating. I've gotta right. I want just match the one. Go get it. Right? Just the one item. I don't care about events. Update, delete. Meh. Uh paginate events singleton. What's if I'm not looking at the events. Hmm. Hmm. Here we go. Single match. Okay, it is doing paginate match index. Okay. So let's do that. Paginate. I guess we have to. Uh, paginate match index. The index name. So the index name that I created in Fauna was over here. Hats underscore tag. Right. Scope. Scope. Okay, now what? After I've got the index, now what do I got? Um, right, where is it? Single match. Match index, comma, and something. Terms. All right, so give me description. Right? So it's going to await that and have a value single match. So let's let's try that. Something like this. And I don't like you hanging out there like that. We're gonna await. So what's it tell me this type is? It is a value. Look at that. Mm, it's a pain in the arm. Oh, look at that. Um, okay, so if I have... I see the question there, Stelzy. Let me park that for a second. Let me park that while I'm trying to figure this out. Um, so can I just do... Uh, return... Uh, single match. What do we have here? Um, what does collect do? No, that's no. At. Would have liked some descriptive text with these. Um, so single match. Single match get ref list. So 
So wait, oh, oh, wait a sec. Hang on. The term that I was searching again, against wasn't this. It's that. That's what I'm matching on that index. So, right? I'm, I'm effectively doing a where there. So I'm going to say single match, get, what's ref list? Show me what ref list is. Come on now. Ref list. Here it is. Data dot collect field to well that doesn't that doesn't explain to me what this is. Um, created instance get ref field. So can I just do? Where was it? Single match. Can I just do get and some value? Yeah, field. Yeah, look at that. All right. So, oh, wait a sec. But it's a of type field. Uh, so how do I do that? Right, how do I? Hmm. Um, so ref list. So this is down here. I'm going to just tag that. Right, ref list. Well, here, these fields... Field at to ugh. all right. Let's try that. Out. Let's see what that gives me. Uh, field at description and what's ref v? I don't know what ref v is. It's a type. Um, can I just to string it? Can I do that? And uh, what happens with? So how do I test this? This is buried over here inside of my chatbot. So I need to figure out a way to test this. I could write a test method out here, but then I would need to pass in that configuration so that I got, right, I don't need endpoint, so that I could see that it's actually fetching and returning that. Um, I could write that. That would be a little bit interesting, but... I mean, it's, an, it's not a bad place to put it, I guess. Right? I mean, if I run... Let me... Let's run the unit test first, make sure they still all run. <laughs> they should. Right? All of our tests should run properly here. Um, but I guess we can add one just to see if it executes the test properly? Maybe? I don't know. So. That description looks a little magical. You love the name of. Um. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Name of would be nice there. Um. If I was using, if I was passing a type in, that would be uh, very cool. Eight fail, eight failed tests. Oh no! What did I do? Oh no! Oh no! no! I know. What happened over here? Oh, this is. Yeah. Oh my! I know. Configure services tests. That other one was because of the change in in um, Twitch APIs. Unable to resolve service for a type of iHost environment. Okay, so this is... I bet it failed on all the same things. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can... Maybe I can... Trick this. Uh, I host environment. Just to get it to do something. No. What do you mean it's ambiguous? Uh... 
object. Yeah. Um, do I need to have a stub host environment hanging out here somewhere? Maybe a mock one? Do I have mocking in this class? No. Alright. Fake configuration service. Uh, fake host in... And I should have a mocking class to do this. And I don't care about that. Um, rerun those tests. So that should knock this down to just two if I did that correctly. It's not actually doing anything with it. Or not? Come on, are you kidding? Value cannot be null of what? GUID parse string input screenshot training service. PowerShell freak! PowerShell underscore freak just resubscribed for 15 months. Thank you so much for that resub. And we'll make a donation to um, the Trevor Project. We're going to be doing that all month. Just carry it forward. And, uh, yeah, very much appreciate it. Fake. It's hosted environment. There we go. Right? That was what it was airing out on. One's the same. Um, all month long, we're going to be supporting the Trevor Project. Thank you so much for your uh, for the resub, and uh, of course, you're going to get all th all of the emotes. I'm commissioning more emotes. Um, Got to get more emotes coming in, um, and we'll pay that forward. Thank you so much. All right, let's see if that helps here. Because I'd really like to be able to just drop in a test that says, go query and make sure we can get data back from Fauna. But that means I'll need to have that secret hanging out there somewhere, and I really don't want that. Look at this. Value cannot be null. Screenshot training service, CTOR. Line 42. What? Where is it trying to do this GUID parse? Oh. The project ID. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. That's in here. Right? Add in memory connection collection for this. Um, good, no good. So it's got a value there. Um, just right. There we go. Always end up tidying up some unit tests. Isn't that always the way? Clear that out. Show me a zero. Big fat zero there. <sighs> Come on. Value cannot be null. Are you kidding? Add in memory con collection configurations. Member data. Name of configuration. Oh, it's not up in here. All right, fine. Make fake configuration because of how it parses that thing, right? 
Um, oh, are you kidding? Client ID, mixer ID, enable fake. wrote this um back that up hmm it's in there new config oh this is receiving that collection of configurations, but it doesn't have. Right, this doesn't have. Yeah. I can force that in here. Good, new good, two string. Now they should all have that for testing. Food time, have a good one. Enjoy your grub. Give me a, show me a big zero there. Mm. Value cannot be null. Parameter input on GUID parse. Yeah, I need to add it down here too. Which tells me that there's a problem there. Right? It's not built very uh, flexibly so that these values can appear and disappear. <coughs> and that's a problem. Right? And there we go. So I've also got this error down here. Should return non-zero count. This is an error having to deal with the... I'm, I'm going to put an ignore on this because we're not using this feature. Um, uh, skip equals uh, not used so that that doesn't get hit and we'll run through. Hey, Copper Beardy. Hello, hello. I'm going to mark that second item is done. We have um, two. There we go. Fantastic. 22 errors up here. Are you kidding? No, 22 tests. One error. Here it is. Object reference not set to an instance of an object in the shoutout command. So when it's trying to execute here, object reference not set to an instance of an object on 48. So it's telling me HTTP client is null. Right, that's what I'm taking that to be. Um... So there is a way to fake that out. Um, do we have? Hey, look at that. All right, hang on, hang on. We'll, we'll get this published and you can do the hat detection on this. Publish that one. I'm going to unpublish and delete this older iteration. Don't need it because we're on 19. Let me reset hat AI. See, it doesn't know what that hat is. Now, if we do the hat command... Uh, wine ball, welcome. So now it's going to take a picture and there you go. 98% certainty. 
it knows it's Doctor Strange. Very, very cool. Right, and if I if I change and put on one of the other hats, it should pick that up as well. Okay. Um, but I want to test that this that I'm hitting fauna properly, and this. Um, so I'm I'm faking here. Excuse me. Um, that HTTP client should be coming back with nothing. Thank you for the follow. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Welcome in. Hello. Let me know how to pronounce it, and I'm happy to welcome you. Always happy to say hello to new followers, new friends joining the stream. Um, I'm not going to get wrapped up in the... I'm, I'm already way deep down the rabbit hole on this. Let me write a test. If I write a test, I'm going to have to put that secret somewhere. And I really don't want to. Um, I do have this one. Um, that does reference the chat bot. And if I put it in an environment... If I put it in an environment variable right now, it's not going to get picked up by Visual Studio. I would have to restart Visual Studio and get it. And there's a back and forth that'll happen there. Um, wait a sec. Oh, that's a shared. That's a shared one. Okay. Uh, boy. Um, I don't know if there's user secrets for this one. Salal, have a good one. Thank you for tuning in. Um, where can I put it to test this? I mean, I could just throw in, in right? I, I could just throw something in the actual app over here during startup. Or even right in the chat bot. Mm -hmm. oh, here we go. Could put something in here. So it registers and sets up the commands right there. Um, I don't want to add something else in there. It's just going to be a pain in the neck. You need to angle mic like mine? I just have it down here. That way, right when I'm looking down here, I can get really close and do that close talking thing. Um, and also, it reminds me of like getting my teeth brushed. My dentist would love me for this. Anyways. Um, taking a look. If I... Well, I receive configuration here. Um, right, if we just did um, equals new hat description repository and I have to pass in configuration right i could do i could do console just to test and this is this is such a jank practice but i'm doing it anyway because it's my code right and i can do what i want do it yes i'm going to do it live here it comes um right if i said uh the description is repository uh, get description. I want to get a description for, and we we wrote one for fairy wings out there. So, right. Um, let's put a little bit here for uh, fairy wings, and um, I can do this and uh, just put the description there. So this is called string interpolation in C sharp, right? Dollar sign quote says, oh, interpolate. There's some C sharp we're gonna 
dip inside of here. And anytime that we put something inside of curly braces, like you see there at the desk on line 64, the curly brace is there, right? This says, hey, everything inside of these curly braces is actually C sharp. Piff it out, go evaluate what this thing is and drop it right where these curly braces are. It's a little bit of syntactical sugar so that you can write something that feels a little bit more like a string better without having to template it out and do a whole bunch of back and forth nonsense. Let me just run this and see if it we get that writing it out correctly. So here we go. Let's see what we get. And I'm I'm not looking for this to actually do anything except for run that query and return the description that we put for fairy wings in the database. And then we can load up more and actually wire it up to the command so that when it responds, it tells you that description as well. So here we go. Um, message received from, Fer well, that was a message from fairy wings. That wasn't actually, hang on, hang on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There we go, there it is. Hey, that's not what I wanted. It didn't do what I wanted. Um, because get description is a task. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't await it. All right, fine. Uh, get uh, a waiter, because I'm in a constructor here. Um, get result, so that should give me a string yeah, I can, I should just hit a breakpoint there. Just wait and see what it says, you know what I mean? I'm better at breaking things than fierce kittens. Um, what? What? Are you kidding? Sorry. Hey, good morning. Look who's here. It's, um. Hey, Ma, we get some meatloaf. We want it now. The meatloaf. I never know what she's doing. How's it going? Hello. Object key description not found. Well, I, that didn't work. Okay. Let's hang on. Let me look at that again. So this is coming out of fauna. Cannot find path description. Key description not found. And this is where, right, I wanted to kind of try and figure this out. Let's put a breakpoint back here. See if we can roll back. Um, can I go back? Uh, I want to set that as... No, not a breakpoint. I want to set this as next statement. Set next statement. Go back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. So now, it did the query. I have a single match object. What single match have in it? <gasps> It's got stuff. It's got stuff. Value one, good. Okay, data, yeah. Key data, okay, value, what do we got there? Value, I see lots of values here. Zero. Collection, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm not getting anywhere with this. Um, hmm. Huh. So, get. I don't know what it's doing here. Um, field at ref. So, what does field at description get? See, I'm going to open my immediate window here so I can... What happens field at... Oh, wait a sec. Uh, well, that doesn't work. Okay. So what is single match get? And it wants a field. So field at description. Cannot find path description. Object key description not found. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find out where this thing is. Um, go back over here. Right? Okay, single match. It gets gets a ref list. What is a ref V? Right? So, ref V, these things. Okay, hang on. So, field ref V is field at two ref. What's a. Okay, so hang on. So, if I say field at description two. I don't know what ref V is. Description. Okay. So if I do that to ref ref v, what's that do? Can I find description? Um, are the fields case sensitive? No, they. Um, I think they are case sensitive, but I did not make it. I made it lower case description. Um, this is somewhere where a simple example would be really nice. Right? Working with I result T, result at two value. Oh, okay. Result at data. What's res? Hang on. So this is something? Uh, single match, no. Single match dot, uh, okay, that is the result. All right, so if I say at description, what do I get with that? I get null. Mm. Is it because the single match returned against the index? And I'm not bringing the thing back. Let's do this. Let's set this back as the next statement. Uh, where is it? Set as next statement. Not show next statement. Set. Step backward. That's even better. You didn't go anywhere. Yeah. This one. Set next statement. There we go. Cool. Let me go back over here. Let me go back to the index. This settings uh, terms values I'd, I'd like to add some values please um, all right fine I'm gonna delete that and rebuild it new index like this on that terms tag values description unique please go Value is cache. Please wait, wait. 60 seconds before creating or renaming before reusing its name. Hmm. Okay. We'll call it that then. Hats tag desk. Try this again. Because we're going to get it to bring the description along with us now. See if we can get that. I've got misconfigured Twitch at my blog. What do you mean, Graze a Pizza Dwarf? Yes, this does feel a little messy to use in .NET. There's definitely a little bit of help they need here. So, single match. Ah, there we go. Look at that. So. Oh, it, my. Right? So, if I step into that. Um, all right. Hang on. Hang on. I think we're on to something, friends. So, and, and, um, there we go. Okay, so it did the query. So, single match, um, value, zero, that, see, this just feels stupid going through that hierarchy. Um, right, I, 
some positive feedback. The, the folks at Fauna are not embracing the .NET technology and instead are trying to expand the .NET technology so it looks more like their technology. Um, let me try using that syntax here. Right, single match at uh, description. Dispel description correctly. No. Okay. Single match dot, what can I do here? See, this feels weird. Like, okay, I got a match back. But I can't just grab it. Um, try leaving it as data. Okay. Uh, at, what do I get with that? Oh, okay. Um, so, okay. Uh, field at description. No. Okay, so I need, I want to get field at indexes, keys. And if I type description, this makes no sense to me. Um, result map, how to work with user defined classes. You think it's an array that I'm re that it's returning. So if I just say field at zero, Dot. No, there is no value there. It's this string V. I don't. If I to string that, I, I don't get what string V is here. I don't care what string V is. It's a string. Give it to me as a string. Why am I fighting a type here? You know? Um, right? Get is generic, yeah. Yeah. We're right there, we're right there. Even this would feel better. I don't, client query, create collection product to convert a value type back to the product type, use a decoder. Decoder, decode, product, value, value at. Look at this. Get ref collection product. What happens if I use that syntax? Um, right? Client query. Um, get ref collection. Well, I did it on an index, right? Hat tag. Can I? Okay. So that has a match. Get. So. Right, that returns some sort of a value. Can I say value at if I say value at 
data, that returns, that doesn't return a string, that, that's a value. But if I want to convert that, it does decoder decode. So what if I do decoder decode string? Doesn't know what decoder is. Let's see what that does. Use get string. Yeah, yeah. Right, so. Um, let's back out. Yes, I know. Judo shut down. Thank you. Back over here. Uh, if I did single match, uh, get string field at description. Um, yeah, it doesn't like that. You like the updated sentiment setup? Thank you. It's Litany. Field.2. Now, see, it doesn't like that. Doesn't like that either. Value at. So, thank you for the follow. Um, Strappa, welcome in. Value at description, right? string nope doesn't like that either cannot convert I result string to string you stink so how do we get this to that dot value oh my gosh like this is syntactic garbage here this is right this is something that you're not helping me on, um, right? Dot value and should there there should be a dot value off of here that just does. Well, here's that type that it is a little bit harder than it should be, right? There's some things we're missing here that that I think we can provide some feedback to help shore up their API and and make some of these things a little bit easier along the ways that dot net folks think. So that, right, you can get a little bit easier pickup here. Yeah, look at that. Um, stepping back into this, um, set next statement. Thank you. Um, thank you for the follow. Exostin, welcome in. Their documentation can use a hand. Absolutely. Um... And the, what it was saying was, it was getting an index here. Um, we had that working properly before. So if we say, developers, developers, thank you for the follow. Reximus07, hello. Um, collection product. Is that the name of the collection? And what is this? Let's do match index, right? Instead of, can we do get match? Will that work? 
Yep, got my Doctor Strange hat on. Look at that. Might be that I need a data model like EF does it, not being able to get single field values. Um, maybe. So. No. Ref refers to undefined index. Hat, tag, desk. Uh, no, it's right there. Hat, tag, I put the wrong. Grr. Oh, are you kidding me? Inconceivable! Look at this, and I'm drooling. I'm drooling coffee down my shirt now. Ugh. Oh my goodness. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this working, and there we go. Okay, single match. Uh, it has the description. Okay, so single match at, let's see if we can break this out and, right? Uh, control alt I. Um, no, I want to clear. Thank you. Null V. Are you kidding? How the heck do you work with this thing? If I say at, what if I do get? Field at. Fine. Get it. No. Oh, there was that data thing. You're right. Thank you for the follow. <clears throat> okay, so I have, right? So now if I say, no, I can't say value. Say at, um, and it wants, so now if I say description, okay, it's a string V and a value. So now if I get that as a string, can I just say value? No. So how do I get, if I two string this? No. I'm like right there and the API doesn't help me. The document doesn't help me. What if I say at data? No. Thank you for the follow, Frank Thomas. No. I just I, I just want that field. I'm literally querying and saying, give me the value of this field, right? Object fields and convert to primitive values. Um so result at data. Let's try that syntax. Um, I've got too many dots in there. No. This is just a little loony. Right? No. Um, be, none of this documentation is clearly telling me here's how to get here's how to get primitive values. Great. I've got the result result at right doesn't give me anything. No. Um, it is quite over-engineered. I will agree with you on that. Um, the 2T helper method, what does 2T do? 
value add data to and then do a complex type. So, right, that's what I'm trying to do. To string dot value. At zero. Nope. So, okay, at with indexes doesn't do anything. It doesn't work. Um, so there's no reason for me to think that would give me anything. Well, okay. But now it's this string V thing. What is of? Missing one. No. Can I convert from value to string? their value of what's that do no no I mean, I could write my own class for this, but I'm literally, I just want to get that description coming back. What does, it's, it's possible to transform one result into another result using map and flap map. So what does result.map do? Can I do single match dot, map is not available there. Right. Do I have map available to me there? Nope. Add a dot value at the end. Um, there is no dot value. Right, that does return this string V type. Right? I don't want a class. I want to be able to bring it back as a string. What is the type of on the result? Um, I don't think type of is working. Right. Oh, now I've done it. Uh, type is a string V. Okay. Fauna is a sponsor for the Live Coders team. So there's a suggestion of to string dot value. Holy crow. Thank you for the follow, Sam. Welcome in. All right. So that should now return just the string we're looking for. Oh my gosh. I think we've got it. I think we've got it. That is a bit complicated. A bit. Um... I would definitely encourage them to hide some of that logic, which might be appropriate for their database. I would encourage them to hide some of that logic um, behind some .NET interfaces because some of that stuff, as the object programmer, I don't care. 
Fitzy does things. Welcome in. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, so I do have that will get and do the thing for us. So what I'm going to do. Um, you know what I should do? I should also test for something if it doesn't exist. Right? So let's try. No, ain't that. Um, let's try this. It might error out. And that's okay. Yeah, their SDK, it could use some feedback. It could use some help to make it a little bit cleaner. And like I said, more object oriented. If I wanted to work directly with GraphQL, I would work with GraphQL. I don't want to work with GraphQL. So don't force me into an API that looks like it. Let me use a simple API that looks just like my objects. So I think there's, there's some opportunity there for some feedback that will level up their API and hopefully as well then make it more palatable, right? More acceptable for .NET developers to be able to dive in because it looks like stuff they've seen before. And then they can consider that and be like, oh, well, this makes perfect sense to me. Um, instance not found, set not found. Okay, right. So let's walk back up this stack. No, 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 no. So what's it look like when it doesn't get the thing, right? Um, I'm gonna set a breakpoint here. Right, so we can handle it appropriately with a null and return an empty string. Sounds like a project to write a helper library to cover all that up. Well, right, that's their SDK. Is Maybe SDK version 3 or whatever it is is a little bit more entity framework friendly. Um, back up. Right in here. So you're telling me it's running, it's throwing an error when it hits that? That's weird. James.js. Welcome in, James. Hello. Let's see what we get here. All right. So it's looking for the FK tag, which that's not in our database. And step and it throws an error. It throws an error when it's not found? Like... That's something that I would expect it not. I would expect it not to throw an error when you're doing a query, right? Zero results is okay. Um, right, what else, what else do we have on query here? Ping new session client. Um, that's very unfriendly. I mean, right? I mean, this is really ugly. Um, empty string. I really don't want to rely on a try catch to that. Um, but if they're throwing an error like that. I mean, now it should be. Hmm. Well, I'm not even at a get default. It's just trying to run the query and it throws an error, nothing found. Which. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit rough. Uh, yeah, so now I have it properly not returning. Um, okay. I, I can't imagine that's right. But that's a little bit of what it's doing. So I'm going to go over to the bot and go into the hat prediction command, predict hat command, and here, uh, 
Um, uh, let's just receive. Right, it's the hat description repository. Repository. Uh, create and assign that field. So now, unable to detect. Hat not found. Here, I think Jeff is currently has this. So what I'll do is I'll say um, var description equals await get description and the hat. Um, and I should only do this if the probability is like above 60%, right? If uh, best match pr probability greater than, greater than or equal to 0 0.6, Uh, get description and the tag is uh, this. Um, no, that's not it. Best match dot tag name. Um, and if string is null or empty, if it is not null or empty, the description um, await chat service and the description. There we go. So if it recognizes the hat and we have a description for it, write it. Let's see. So I'll grab the fairy wings hat here. Run it first on this one. Have a good one, Stelzy. Thanks for joining us. A fauna expert when I stream. I can reach out to their folks a little bit here. Unable to reserve, resolve service. Oh, I didn't register the service. I didn't. It's not made available yet. Uh, da, 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 da. Startup services, configure services. Where's it doing? Hat, 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 hat things. Not that, hat. Um, vision? No. What did I call the? What did I call the thing with the stuff? That time. Uh, screenshot training. There it is, right there. Uh, services add transient. Um, and it was uh, hat description repository. So now when I ask for one of those, it knows how to give it. Fantastic. Here we go. This should do the thing. Do, 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 do. Starting. Come on. And this is going to be amazing when it works, right? So now, exclamation point hat. It's going to go take a picture and it should come back that I'm wearing my Doctor Strange hat. Good. This one didn't return. Oh, no. Look at that. Image data is null. Oh, you know what? It's not connecting OBS properly. It didn't connect. Um, oh my. I need another OBS service running that's connected. I can't dupe this. Because it doesn't know how to connect into OBS and it's going to bail out, it's going to crash. Hmm. We could just throw caution to the wind and compile and deploy and see how it goes. And see, look, it's 
running out there taking pictures. Uh, let's do this. Um, now, uh, querying fauna um, for information about the hats discovered, the hat discovered, right? Um, <laughs> let's see what tag we want to put on this. 121.5. While that's building, I'm going to sneak out over here and grab that fauna secret. Secret. And uh, copy it into the configuration for my production bot. So here it is. Um, it's this. Copy that out. So it's still building here in the background, doing its thing, chugging along. Chug a lug, chug a lug. I'm um, going into my environment variables for the bot. And I am adding a new reference for that secret. Yeah, good. All right. Sure, I closed all those things. Yep. Good. We're going to wrap up here. I think we've got this compiled and deploying properly. And here we go. Finishing, finishing the bundler. Come on. Finish up. There it goes. Publishing, we're gonna put this inside. This is already being put inside the Docker container. Come on, put it in there. Come on. You can do it! Let's go, Docker. Yes, I know. There we go. 121.5. I'm only pushing 25 meg of new content. That's right, that's my bot that it's basically putting in there the binaries for it and it's marking the latest appropriately there so let me kill the running bot the running bots nothing like the running man that that totally a thing so there it goes and do I run my bot in an Azure app service plan nope run it locally Run it locally, don't need to spend the money on that. Because it only runs when I'm up here. And it doesn't take up, and I can take up a lot of space here in the background, and I can see it all here as well. Um, so now if I do exclamation point hat, it should identify the Visual Studio hat. Not the Visual Studio, Doctor Strange hat. I know what hat I'm wearing. Maybe. Um, didn't get the message back, because that got disconnected. So I need to work on the OBS proxy reconnecting. All right. So, sure, we'll put that up there. There we go. Try it again. Should, right? Exclamation point hat. Took the screenshot. There it goes. Dr. Strange hat. Now, if I change into the fairy wings hat, which does have description to go with it. It should now not just identify the hat, but it should also tell you. Ah, see that? It, it's like cached it. It right. It's it's caching the result somewhere along the way here. There we go. Look at that. I think with 84% certainty that I'm wearing the Fairy Wings hat. Fairy Wings is another streamer. Learn more about her and you have a clickable link. Look at that. That's what we wanted. I think we've got it. 
I'm yes, that's very cool. Um, Major Gamer Geek asks, um, "Do I use Linux as my container image?" Sure do. Yes, indeedy. That is the the default .NET Core Linux image. Um. Um, Strimpies asks any .NET Core running on Android phone um, in not yet it's still Xamarin but when we get to November .NET 5 will be released and it'll be .NET running on an Android phone it'll be the same base class library the same compiler front to back working over there Yanzor Yans Zero are just resubscribed for two months. C sharp punk. Thank you so much for the resub. Appreciate you joining us. And I'll pay it forward with a donation to the Trevor Project this month. Um new, Newber Than You asks. Show me the next question. Come on. Uh come on. There it goes. What learning framework am I using for the hat recognition? You know what? I'm using... I don't... Um, I am using... This is Azure Custom Vision AI over here that we're using. Um, and it knows... right. It's got a great user interface here so I can load it up with all these pictures. And I just upload a picture to it and say, tell me what you think this is. And it spits out a tag for it. So... I don't know specifically what it's doing underneath the covers, but for me as a as a developer, I don't really care. It's doing its thing. It's black box. Go do your thing. I'm just asking it to predict images. And that, I think, that simplicity is the same simplicity that we now have with a lot of databases where I don't care what the structure of the database is. I don't care... We're, and we're seeing a little bit of this with Fauna, but when we have a good API, I don't care if you're running SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, InnoDB, whatever. I, Sybase, is Sybase still out there? Is that still a thing? Go do your query and give me back data. I don't care what your SQL syntax is. There's people that are smarter than me that can optimize for that. Same thing with artificial intelligence. Ah, go analyze this stuff. Just do a prediction for me and tell me what you think it is. So, it, uh, Goose! Talk to me, Goose Man is here. He's another member of the Live Coders team, just like Fierce Kittens and a couple other folks. It's Litany, I see here. Um, yeah, it, very good point here from Talk to me, Goose Man. And I'm going to come to Kitten's question here. No code solutions for complex things like this? Really awesome. Really, really cool. Fierce Kittens did have a, a good question here that we need to make sure we touch on. Um, what's the difference between .NET 5, .NET Standard, .NET Framework, .NET Core? Hard to keep track. You're right. You're absolutely right. So, .NET Framework, in the beginning, there was .NET Framework. Right, that was the .NET that was released in 2001, and a young, brash Scott Guthrie in his red polo shirt brought out ASP.NET, and everybody started making web forms, and life was good because you could only target one thing, Windows, because everybody had Windows in 2001. It was 98% of the market, and life was happy. But things started changing, right? And we wanted to build for, build with Silverlight. We wanted to build for... Uh, the web using different models. We wanted to build for phones. We wanted to build for devices. So we had .NET Compact Framework, Silverlight, Universal Windows Applications, Xamarin, um, all these different things happening and it got confusing. So .NET Standard is that contract language that says, well, this is how these APIs in .NET Framework and Xamarin and Silverlight and Windows Phone and UWP and UAP, UAP was a thing, how they all relate and talk to each other and how when we compile, we'll bring in the appropriate binaries for whichever target framework you're writing to. 
.NET Core is that next evolution of .NET Framework where they've completely swapped out the runtime underneath the APIs so that it's now very cloud optimized, much, much faster, focus on performance, and it's separated from Windows. That's a key thing, separated from Windows so that .NET Core compiles for Windows, Mac, and Linux. .NET Core, we've had versions 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 3, 1, and now we're looking at .NET 5. .NET 5 is the next evolution of .NET Core where, well, quite frankly, there can be only one. And we're bringing together, as .NET standard is that definition of contracts between the different types of .NETs that were floating around out there, and Silverlight is still supported, friends. Um, let me go over to the chat here since I'm not really talking about what's on screen. PCL tried to solve some of this portable class libraries, but it, it wasn't the right approach. So what we've got with .NET 5 is we're taking Xamarin and we're taking .NET Core and we're bringing them together into one base class library, one set of tools that you'll be able to use to build not just desktop applications for Windows, Mac, and Linux not just web applications that run on Windows, Mac, and Linux, but mobile applications that run on iOS and Android. So you can .NET new iOS app from the command line, .NET new Android app from the command line. You won't be able to deploy to those platforms unless you have a developer account, you have developer toolkits installed, and some of those cost money, and that's outside of the .NET space. But you can build and have everything you need to deploy and run on those platforms. And that's what .NET 5 is attempting to deliver. .NET 6 includes something called .NET MAUI. And .NET MAUI is going to take Xamarin Forms applications, right? The, those visual applications that you could build, right? WPF does this a bit and WinForms does this. But be able to build those and they work everywhere. Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android one model and it just works on everything that's the goal for it and that's why it's about a year and a half out they're working on it they're working hard on it and it's not a simple answer to deliver on but with .NET 6 the promise is one tool set and you'll be able to build and deliver whether it's as big as the cloud as small as an IoT device or anywhere in between mobile device desktop application whatever so that's the difference between them. There's so much going on there. It's a bit of a struggle and people have, have some perception problems with it because there are so many moving pieces because um, the, the growth of .NET has been such that Vice President so-and-so and Vice President so-and-so like the idea and they go off and they fork it and they don't have to answer to the operating <laughs> to the folks that actually need to support this stuff and go and build their own things on top of it and it, it made a terrible experience for developers. So by doing it, by bringing everything back together and providing authority over .NET and C Sharp and VB and F Sharp, you're going to see a much, much better and cohesive e ecosystem. The, the .NET brand will be unified and everybody will know what .NET net is. Everybody will know you program with your choice of language to target it, and it'll be much, much better. Yes, .NET 5, the one .NET to rule them all. Agreed, Surly Div. Um, I see a couple comments here from Talk to Me Gooseman about Fauna. Fauna is a cloud NoSQL database. You can use GraphQL to query it. Yes, the, the APIs in .NET are a little clumsy. Um... As somebody who doesn't do GraphQL, as somebody who doesn't go through and, and use that interface, it feels clumsy in the .NET APIs. Um, and that's just the way that it, that it works. Uh, and we can offer some feedback to help them make it a little bit more friendlier to .NET folks. Um, Fitzy Does Things asks, it's not on the screen. It's not on the screen. I need to put, what's it called on the screen? Where'd it go? Hang on. Let's put featured chat on the screen. There it is. How do you keep motivation to code on Sunday? Do you code at work? How do I keep sanity? Do you think I'm sane? Um, 
this is fun for me. This is what I enjoy. This is a bit of my hobby. So uh, it's fantastic to spend time with you on Sundays. And uh, I, I really enjoy it. So, um, you listen to a podcast about .NET Maui with Scott Hunter. Seems super interesting. Yes, it should be tremendous. Fitzy Does Things has a comment here. Saw something about a Live Coders mentor program. Yes. Are there other resources already out there for th folks thinking about starting? Um, check out live.jeffreyfritz.com. Live.csharpfritz.com. There's uh, information about out there about how I set up my configuration. There's a bunch of articles from folks on dev.to about this. Um, I had a video on the, a stream on Thursday where I showed this configuration, how I put all of this together and, and went through that. Um, but there, we are starting up a mentorship program to get five to 10 folks um, off the ground, get them the support they needed to get started live coding and streaming. It's, it's a lot to, to learn and it takes a, um, a little bit of support to get started. You're welcome, Lissamit. I agree with kittens on this one. Problem solving keeps me sane. A bit of what we're doing is like, it's like puzzles, right? It's solving a puzzle and it does. It keeps me sane, right? Ah, I, I solved that problem. I figured it out, that type of thing. Um, you want to stream code later now <laughs> and you never stream on Sundays? Hey, more power to you if you want to. That is awesome. Uh, da, 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 da. You hope to be able to take advantage of the mentorship, says Mr. Smoofy. Yeah, we're there's some discussion going on on that. We're taking care of um, membership. We've got some membership, uh, a huge rush of folks that want to join the team. We're taking care of that first, and we're going to launch mentorship, mentorship after that. And we're also planning a women in tech event with our friends from Manning. So um, we'll see where that lands and, and these other things because we want to make sure that the tech community grows and um, there's folks out there teaching and learning in cool ways. So I think, I think that's a stream, friends. I think we've had... This has been tremendous. We had a great time together today. So much stuff. We learned a little bit about FaunaDB. We we went through the the lightning round with hats today, teaching teaching the bot all about hats, um, and uh, I'm I'm really thrilled that um, we got to spend a little bit of time. There it is with Fauna and, and getting that up and running looked really cool, um, but could use some help. We could, and I I, I want to provide some feedback to them about ways that we can simplify that API and get folks a little bit more productive. So, all of our code is checked in, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Looking forward to Tuesday. I want to put an API next to, not an API, a web interface to it next to it now, so that we can get that information in the picture of our hat output in the blue box there on screen. Hey, Jenny Nexus! So good to see you. Jenny Nexus is another member of the Live Coders. Um, make sure you check her out. She's doing some really cool demos and tutorials on getting started with Blender and building all kinds of stuff with that. I want to figure out how to make this guy. Get him all rigged up in Blender so I can get him walking across the screen. The screen. That'd be so cool. So, all right. I'm going to set up. Let's get a raid happening here. Get a raid happening. Is that a, is that even a thing? Make a make a raid. Do a raid. Oh, Shalus. Oh my gosh. Let's do it. Let's set up. Let's put the raid call out. Let's put the raid call out. Here it comes. If you're a subscriber, copy the first line. If you're not a subscriber, copy that second line. Put it on your clipboard. We're going to announce ourselves. We're going to be loud and proud. As we go and barge in to go see Shale Codes. She's another member of the Live Coders team. And I like to pay it forward and support some of those folks. Uh, you just got some follows after that shout out? Fantastic. I thought I typed in that raid command. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Is it actually. Where's the raid? There's a raid. There should be a raid. I already have a raid in progress, it says. Okay. Well, I don't have the button popping up here. 
thank you so much, friends. I will be back on Tuesday. We're going to do a little bit more with our bot and getting some integrations here on stream. And um, we'll see about getting into some .NET 5 and then some Blazor. All right? Till then, I will see you. Uh, I'll see you around Twitch. Take care.